Um, this scene is available for you to start with, although you can drag out your own splines just by going to Create, Shapes, and I've used circles right there. I've used uh, n-gons right there, a uh, rectangle right there, star right there, and text right there. Text will work as well. Okay, I'm going to start with my circle. I'm going to get rid of these guys. I'm just going to hide them for now. I'm going to take my circle and I'm going to center it by zeroing out these numbers down here. There we go. That'll center it. Now, to Boolean two shapes together or more, we have to hit this button here. So I've made one shape, and then I've got to hit this button and turn it off, which is kind of strange. We turn it off, and now I'm going to drag out a rectangle. Uh, let's, do, let's do a big rectangle. There we go. And a star. Let me make the star like that. And um, it doesn't matter if we line them up right now, because we're going to get a chance to line them up here in a second. Now, if they're all white in these top left and front viewports, then you've done it correctly. If they're different colors, then you didn't hit this button and turn it off. So make sure that's done correctly. All right, we're going to go to Modify. They should say Editable Spline, or you've done something incorrect. If they're editable spline, we're in good shape. We have our three editable spline parts, vertex, segment, and spline. I'm going to select spline, and I'm going to arrange these how I want them. And I think what I'm going to do... Um, yeah, I'm going to just place these numerically. We're going to pull that guy up, just like that, I think. There we go. And I'm going to now combine these shapes to make one single shape. With segment turned on and one of the segments selected, I go down here to Boolean. And it should be brightly colored and not grayed out. Otherwise, again, you've done something wrong. You'll need to go back and try it again. I'm going to hit Boolean. This is my union button. I'm going to click on the box, and you'll see that it's now combined the two. Now, you can hit this one, which is subtraction. You'll see that it will subtract the piece. In my case, I'm going to hit union again, and I'm going to combine it there. So now I've made this little shape. If I maximize my viewport, I'm going to hit G to turn the grid off. And you can see that I've made this fairly complex little shape that I'm now going to make something else out of. Now, to get this guy to be solid, you'll see right now it won't render. There's nothing there. I'm going to uh, convert this to an editable poly, and that's going to make it solid. Now it will render. And if it renders, then we've got our five editable poly parts. In this case, I can just hit element because it's all one element. Well, actually, let's hit polygon. So it's all one great big multi-sided polygon right now. And I'm going to hit settings under bevel. And I'm going to make the height. Well, let's see. Yeah, let's do something different this time than I usually do. I'm going to make it come up a little bit. Then I'm going to make the height. No, I hit the wrong button there. Start over. Okay, starting over. <laughs> Select it, and I'm going to make the height about 10 in this case, the outline amount at 0. That makes it go straight up. I'm going to hit apply. Here's my edged faces so you can see what's going on. The height is going to be 0. The outline amount is going to come in a little bit. Make sure you're not getting any edges folding over on themselves. Sometimes when you get edges that are too tight, it'll kind of fold over a little bit on itself. I'm going to hit Apply. Now the outline amount is going to be zero. I'm going to put the height up so it's going to kind of grow out of that piece there. There we go. 
I'm going to hit apply. The height amount's going to be zero. The outline amount's going to come out a little bit. Hit apply. This is going to be zero. And the height is going to go up a little bit. Hit apply. And now I'm just going to make it come in. Whoops, that's the wrong one. Outline mount. There we go. Make this come in a little bit. Hit apply. Zero. Height down. Apply. And the outline amount in a little bit. There we go. Okay, and what we've made here is a pretty complex little object. This is how you can make buildings. So if you want to put buildings in your scene, this is a really good way to do it. This is also the way that architects can make layouts in Macs. They can actually use their um, blueprints and just make shapes that match the blueprints, boolean them together, and then extrude the walls out. Um, there's lots of ways to use this technique. We're going to do one more here in a second. But this is a shape that I could put on my tank if I wanted to. Now, there are some areas here that could probably be um, uh, welded together, like right in here. Actually, let's go to my four screens. We'll zoom in right in this area. See all those polygons right there? It's probably a little bit un optimized, although that's not a word. We'll just call it unoptimized for now. And I think what I'm going to do, I'm just going to clean this up a little bit. Let's see what happens if we can weld those together. And see if we can get some of them to stick together. I'm just kind of seeing if that held up. That did pretty well. Yeah, okay. That held up pretty well. We just did a well threshold. You can see I had 396 before vertices before, and I knocked it down, which means I got rid of some polygons. And it held up pretty good, it looks like. I didn't, I didn't lose any of the shape, so that'll work, I think. A little bit better optimization. There we go. And um, so that's one shape that um, I made. I'm going to save this scene so you guys can look at it, and then I'm going to make another one. So this one's going to be called After O2. There we go. And um, I'm thinking whether I can use this for my tank. I don't think I'm going to save that for my tank. I'm going to unhide all now. And we're going to just highlight this guy and hide the selection. So we're back to these. Now, I don't think I'm going to use this one. I'm going to hide that. And we'll go with... Let's go with this one. I made too many there. gave myself too many choices. Okay. I'm just centering this just so that I can see what's going on. Oh, I've got a star hanging out here too. Let's hide that guy real quick. Okay, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to my shapes, and I'm going to uncheck this box so that I can connect them, and I'm going to go to text this time. And I'm going to type in a letter. I'm going to type in, say, a capital K. That's going to have too many vertices in it, so I'm going to go to something like an aerial. That'll work. You can see the aerial K is much straighter lines, which means it's going to be more optimized. And um, I'm going to type in another K here, capital K. Capital K. There we go. Okay, and go over to Editable Spline. I'm going to grab this spline. I'm going to mirror that one. Whoops, that's mirroring the whole thing. That's not what I wanted to do. Let me flip this guy over in one of these. If I type in a 180, it will flip. Did that flip it? No. Oh, rotate. That's why. 
There we go. Which one is it? That one. Okay. This vertice, this, um, there we go. That axis. I was trying to move it. I should have rotated it. Okay. I'm going to center this and put it right there, I think. That'll work. And same with this guy. You could do one side of this and um, uh, put symmetry on it. Sorry, I was trying to do two things at once. I'm going to grab these two vertices right here and move them in all the way so that I don't end up with weird little corner pieces. I'm going to do the same over here. I think that'll work all right. And now I'm going to convert this to an editable poly. Oh, we didn't Boolean them. You guys forgot to tell me to Boolean them. I guess that's my job, isn't it? Okay, so we go under spline. Sorry, back up. And it's late at night right now. I'm starting to get tired. And we'll hit Boolean. There we go. I'm going to Boolean those together, that one together. Now we have our object. That's what we were after all along. If you want to change anything in the shape, now would be the time to do it. I don't like this piece here. I think that's a little too too tight. I think I'm going to grab these two also. I'm going to move those down. There we go. And now, editable poly. So now it's a real polygon object right there. Zoom in on it. And we'll go to Polygon, we'll grab this, and we're going to bevel it up, and we're going to make our shape again, just like we did before. The outline amount is going to be zero. Hit apply, zero. You don't have to do this stepping all the way up like I do. I just like that look. I'm going to make this come up a little bit, I think. There we go. And you can do whatever you want to this at this point. I could bevel out these pieces. So you could make your tank body um, this exact same way. There we go. making a shape here that I think looks cool. So I'm going to undo that. Just hit OK. And spin this around. I think the front of this could use some action. There we go. We'll go to bevel again on this guy. Bevel these out. kind of like the way that looks. And I can put this on the tank and make it an object if I want, or, I don't know, you can do whatever you want with it. You can make your tank body this way, like I said. The one thing that we do have here, again, and this is the, the issue with any type of Boolean, is we've got this great big multi-sided polygon here on the top. And for this to be to behave in a game type environment. This is the only polygon with a problem right now. We would need to delete that and then go to our polygons, create, and we would need to come in here, figure out where I'm going here. here I'll tell you what, let me get a better view of this. There we go. I think that'll work. And uh, we can create polygons from this, like so. And it takes a while to figure out what I'm looking at here. 
rotate this guy around. There we go. Create. There we go. This. I'm going to go across here. I think that's right. Got to spin this around, make sure that's all nice and flat, which it is. And these metal guys should be fairly easy. Spin it around, make sure we caught the tops, not any other ones by accident. Now, if you didn't want to do the rest of this because you're lazy, like me, you could just put symmetry on top of all of this. Whoops get off our sub-object, and put symmetry on top of it. There we go. And you'll see that symmetry will just seam that all up nice and neat for us, which is what we want. And we then, I'm going to convert this back down. Uh, we could continue extruding pieces and beveling them if that's what you wanted to do. So... Now, everything we do from this point forward would be safe to go into a game, at least in theory. There we go. So, I don't know. Maybe that's the tank body that we've got there. We could do the same thing to the bottom. We can just seam the bottom up if that's what you wanted to do. So, um, that's how you can use shapes to lay out more complex objects. I use this technique a lot for making buildings, especially in backgrounds where there's not going to be a lot of detail. I use it a lot with this tank project that I've done a lot of times before in making little gizmo pieces that fit on the tank. I also use it for the tank treads, the little bumpy parts on the tread. I think you can come up with some interesting designs this way. So that's Boolean shapes. Give that a try. I'm going to save this object as well so that you've got it. And this one's going to be called After Three. And uh, you can take a look at those if you want.